Season 8, Episode 3, Warm Winter Day. And I got this cool little Bob Ross figurine from my awesome stepson for Father's Day. He is snowboarding in this painting, and I'm going to introduce him and sneak him into future paintings and just have some fun. He is a cool little guy. Little happy Bob Ross. Right on. <laughs> fun. Anyway, I finally did it. I broke the barrier. I finally beat Bob at the sky. And this was the um, just a lot of pink spray paint and a little bit of purple on the top edges. So it kind of made it easy. He spent a lot of his time brushing back and forth, back and forth to really blend his sky where in spray painting, you pretty much do that automatically. It did take some clear coating and things like that. And I did have to do the sun over a few times, but I was able to do the sky in two minutes to Bob's proximate five minutes. So there you go. I broke a record finally. <laughs> anyway, so a uh, cool little painting. This is my first winter scene with snow. So I'm definitely going in the experimental mode with the snowy, you know, blendy, colory part of it, trying to match what he did in his painting with some of the lavender, some of the blue and some of the pink. He kind of blends that into the snow that he does. So I try to mimic that as best as I possibly can. And it's obviously doing a lot of um, clear introducing that too. And so I'm going to hit this with a little more brighter yellow it's just to see if i can get you know that kind of more sun glow look and this is mixing the kona brown with the purple again kind of like i've done in other paintings before this uh, just laying down that shadowy tree line standard procedure you still using that zebra. I don't know if it's zebra or zebra. It's probably zebra. I don't know how to pronounce it. Maybe you know how to pronounce that brush. It's one I introduced in the last painting. And it, it does work really good for doing the trees and shrubbery and things, things like that. Also the clouds and stuff. There's no clouds in this sky. That's why I was able to do mine so quickly because clouds take longer. And then just uh, also doing a little bit de detail with the fan brush too. Trunks, I just use, I believe I just use black for this because the purple and Kona were so dark that in order for these trunks to stand out, they really need to be just be black paint. And that's just the basic liner brush technique of doing that. Try to mimic some of the things that he did in his painting just to just for the fun element of it, just to see how much I can replicate. Now I'm doing the highlights. I started out adding a little bit of pink to the white, but the Rust-Oleum white is already like a dull white. It isn't really a super bright white, and I've experienced that using it in other areas of my work. I've noticed that if I do touch up things on, on white things, it actually has a gray tone. So I axed the pink toned white, which is what he did in his painting. He just kind of softened a little with some pink. And I just went with the straight white because it wasn't really, there wasn't really enough contrast with the pink whitish color. And the only thing I realize with this brush is there's, I don't have as much control as he does with his two inch oval brush. And so I might see if I can find myself an oval brush versus this round brush. And then coming back and just doing some of the snow and snowy grassy stuff at the bottom like he did. I was really stoked about that little Bob Ross figure. <laughs> I opened the box. I didn't know what I was opening. And if I took him out of the box and I go, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> I called him up. And I told him how much I appreciated it, how much I appreciated him. Pretty cool. Now just a little bit of more highlighting. 
Now it's time for the cabin. So it's just the Kona Brown. I'm gonna box in the front portion of it. I sketched it in with a little grease pencil so I could get all my perspective dialed in. Where he does his with a knife. So I just put the Kona Brown in there and then the next is the highlight. I tried doing it with a knife. And this is my first cabin, by the way. I have not done a cabin yet. So I tried, I think I tried to do it with a knife and it just, it, it's just too, too many things going against it. So I just used the fan brush and I, it, it pretty much created the same effect. It's a little dark right now, but maybe once the camera angle changes, you'll see it better. Oh, here we go. Here's, so I'm using that lighter, I think the khaki brown for this. And I, I feel like it kind of did, it's not as uh, like skippy as it would be with a knife, but I figured, you know, it still looks like that, that barn look, that weathered barn look. So I was cool with that. And I just used the, the uh, liner brush and black to do the boards where he does the edge of his knife. And I just box in the doorway and then again use the liner brush and some white while it was wet. I like doing it while it's wet because then it, everything kind of blends together. It, it doesn't get so stark, like almost like a drawing. You put do the white right away and it, it blends into the black and the brown. So it looks a little bit more, uh, I don't know, incorporated with each other colors. This is just that little blue window he does. So I just threw that in there. Now this, this white is, doesn't cover... I mean, this is straight out of the can, so I, I didn't dilute this at all. So it didn't cover very well. Uh, it might cover if you spray it, but if you're brushing it. So I went ahead and hair dried it and then did a second coat, and that covered it. And I didn't want it to be, you know, just solid white. I, I wanted to have some streaks in it, a little bit of texture to it. So it looked like some snow had some shadow to it. Came out decent. So yeah, the cabin turned out to be an easier process than I, you know, imagined it. And I just used some burgundy for the chimney and I you know, put a little snow cap on top. Done. Kevin, move on to the fence. Same Kona Brown, just liner brush. And I went ahead and I did a highlight of the wood with some of the khaki brown, you know, some of the lighter tan. And then on top of that, I introduced the snow on top of that. So I was hoping to get like a three-tiered color spectrum on it. So just, just to give it a little bit more interest rather than just brown and snow on top. The snow came out better than I expected. I wasn't sure how the blending was going to go. But I, I feel like it, it came out pretty good. You're going to see there in the down the road here that uh, there was a happy little accident they had to fix kind of at the end. And then here I'm just stockpiling the snow up against the fence and against the, the cabin. And then I'm just going to make that little path that he makes in his with some of the lavender. And then I'm going to try and blend that all into itself. And blending is is possible if you just introduce the clear. So you can do this overlay like this because all that paint underneath is dry. But you can come back and and spray on some clear like I'm doing there, and then just kind of blend it in, soften it in. It, it does it does blend in, and some of the streakiness actually kind of look good because it kind of gives it that I don't know shadow effect you know like there's little indentations and places like that so i you know what i thought was going to be more challenging ended up actually being actually quite easy with the snow with the water is more much more difficult than snow i if i would compare the two this is those little two little grassy features and it's just that same background color as i did for the trees above but lightened a little bit more and I'm just using that one inch bristle brush to create that effect. The posts, same Kona, Kona khaki and, and white. I'm 
just I put the highlights on first, hit it with the knife, just to kind of give it a little texture. It's kind of the best way to do it is just put a glob of paint on the edge and then just pull that glob of paint into the into the um, darker color. And you can kind of arc it a little to give it that round, spherical look. Getting the grassy parts a little more grassy, kind of building up around the post and then just capping it all off. Oh, you can see how the dripped right there. Got a little white drip right there, but you can just come back and just touch it up. Easy. Now it's time for that left side foreground um, terrain. Pushing a little bit of snow into that grassy area though first. Touch it up. Now it's time. And I just did the same thing. I just, I did my shadows first. He pulls shadow into the wet paint after he does the bushes and things like that. Where with the spray paint, it, since it dries so fast, I went ahead and tried to do the shadows first. And then, and then apply the bushes over the top of those shadows. Because it's just, this stuff just dries too fast to do it the way he does it. Okay, and the same purple in Kona. There's a little, there's a little bit of white added just to mute it a little, so it's not super dark. Dark. <laughs> you, you can see I did some more before, between takes, and that trunk is just black. And then I highlight that with ivory on this on the right sides of the trunk, and then come back with coral. But it's not straight up coral. I I did tone it down. I didn't want it to be super bright because that coral is a very bright color. So I toned it down with a little cone of brown, uh, possibly some white even, just to mute it a little. I wanted this to be a warmer, softer paint versus you know super bright like some of the ones I've done in the past. Bushes are the same. And then I bring in introduce some more tan and yellow just for the lower sections of the grass. So there's a little bit of interest there. A little color change. The fan brush is really cool. You can do a lot of different types of bushes and, and grass. You can do so much with that fan brush. If you spin it, turn it on edge, there's just so many things you can do with that. It's it's really the versatile brush. Here I'm just I'm taking I think a lighter version of the coral, just to highlight it a little bit, just to make it pop. Yeah, well, that fan brush is the. If you didn't have any, oh here I spilt, it splattered. I don't know how that happened. It just I don't know because I stand way back when I spray them in the cups, and I'm like in the other section of the shop when I do that, so this doesn't happen. So now I gotta do a happy little touch up. And I'm thinking to myself, uh, I may have to do this painting over again. But fortunately, I just, what I did was I just, you know, slopped it over the top, get it nice and thick. And I said, well, it's gonna, it's gonna become whatever it becomes. So I was hoping that it would work out. And as you see, I just keep blending and blending. And I, I come back and put a little of the blue in, some of the pink and a little bit of lavender. I just kind of, Dobble in color, and then I just try to you know keep blending and blending because everything underneath that is pretty much completely dry. So you're kind of dealing with a start over moment. But what I notice as I'm continuing, and this is real time by the way, as you probably see, what I'm realizing is that it's actually starting to work out as a plus. And the reason why is it's it's creating a little bit more interest, more like, I guess, like uh, layers of snow. So it's kind of like on top of snow, on top of snow, on top of snow. And even the Kona Brown, I think it's Kona Brown that got, oh, there's 
figured it'd have to be one of the darkest colors. But I think it also created kind of these little dirt kind of spots. And I said, you know what, I'm going to go with that. That's kind of cool because it's, you know, there's, you know, we're kind of in a grassy area. So little dirt spots would probably happen. So I went with it. And I think it turned out actually. But I actually like the way it looks. It's, it, there's there's more of a an interesting kind of texture to it now versus when it was just all smooth. So, yeah. Sometimes things work out like that. And sometimes you have to do the painting all over again, especially if it's a huge, if you get a lot of paint all over it. But this was such a small amount. I said, I'm going to try and make it work out. And it was turned out to be okay in the end. All right, now it's time for the, what I would consider the birch trees-ish. <laughs> so these are uh, always fun because it's just a lot of brush line work and the the paint, the spray paint just merits itself for this kind of, uh, of a tree and element because it's just all, it's so, you know, it's, it's naturally diluted to the degree that just makes this easy. I mean, super easy. And then I bring in the, I believe that's the khaki, so just a light tan, and I just pull that in with the knife, just standard processing. Kind of make it, kind of arc it a little so that it kind of gives it that spherical, cylindrical look. And then just start putting all these branches. And basically, I was just looking at his painting when I was doing this and just, you know, just getting as close as I can to where he put his branches and how he did his branches. And this is actually pretty fun. It's pretty cathartic. It's just pulling the liner brush away from the tree like that and just making all these fun branches. Looks like reindeer antlers. The sun still wasn't, I wasn't satisfied with the sun. And so I went ahead and sprayed just the straight up uh, yellow. The the one that's on there now is that more softer yellow. It's a step into closer to orange yellow. And so I just sprayed, I did it one more time with just a bright yellow. And then putting the snow on top of all the branches. That's fun too. Kind of adds a really cool detail to it. You can go on forever with these paintings, add more grass, all kinds of things. Here's I'm putting down the brighter, brightest yellow I have just to make the sun pop. And that completes this painting. Here's mine. Bob's. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.